Welcome to the Dope Podcast. My name is Dean Chambers, and this is a podcast where we display other people's experience, expertise, and enhance your knowledge. I created this platform to help combat the fear of missing out on opportunities. It's also a central place for your questions to be answered and a place where like-minded individuals get inspired. So I just wanted to start with the topic of discussion today, which will be Turo. Turo has been a common topic um, throughout the, the year for people to make an additional income, especially those who work from home and their cars are sitting at home doing nothing in their driveway. So today I have two guests with me that will be asking questions and sharing their experience thus far with Turo. So my first guest is Colin, who wanted to know more about Turo and probably has a lot of questions that you guys wanted answered, but don't know where to go or who to ask. And then I also brought on Ryan, who started his Turo journey. Was it this year or last year, Ryan? Yeah. It was this year? Yeah. So Ryan's going to share his experience so far with uh, the Turo platform and how he has found it. So I'm just going to get let you guys... Uh, so how we're going to start this off, I just have two questions to, to ask you guys. And then I'm going to let Ryan share his experience uh, so far with the, the platform. And then Colin, I'll let you jump in, ask any questions that you have for myself or even to Ryan. And Ryan, you can do the same as well. Ask any questions throughout the the podcast and then also i'm going to be giving people some do's and don'ts that i feel is most important when it comes to starting turo all right so colin what sparked your interest to to learn more about turo what started my uh interest about turo was about two and a half years ago um i was moving from mono back into uh branton and my car broke down. So I was looking around, it was, I'm hustling, bustling, trying to find to rent a car, but I don't want to spend as much money because I'm moving between two houses and everything. So I went on the tour app, my friend from California told me download uh, Turo and find a car. So I found this little, I think like a Fiat, a little small car. And from that car, I met, I met the guy who actually did the carpet cleaning for my house because I met up with him and he's like, Hey, this is a car. This is a basic thing about it. And I'm like, is this actually a workable, feasible revenue of anything? And he's like, honestly, my kids have it. I have it. The car just sits here never in my driveway. It's neat. So this little car went from back and forth from mono to, um, to Brenton for like three days. It was the smallest car. And, from that, I always thought about it. And after you and um, your your internet, um, not internet, your social media outlet, um, brought the conversation back in again. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I never ever see, like for me, pickup trucks on there. And I couldn't get a pickup truck in the last two months from Home Depot, um, U-Haul, discount. And they, when I went in there one time, they asked him, like, asked him, hey, how do I get a pickup truck? He, she's like, you have to wait two to three months just to rent something right now because wow. everybody is using the trucks. They're blocking it up for about two to three weeks and they go from there. So I was like, okay, well, seems pretty, pretty easy as an idea to try to go, try to start this up. So that's where it, it came from. That's where rigid, well, the whole plan originated from. So I do have some concerns. I just don't understand how <laughs> and not even the other five w's just how 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 how, <laughs> how how do you start how do you do this how do you do that yeah yeah that, that that's amazing it's it's always something that just leads you to it and it's like hmm i wonder if i can make money off of this and considering that you were in a sticky predicament on renting a car i almost mm-hmm. It just opened up an idea for me that probably you could look more into it to see if it makes sense where if Home Depot, the U-Hauls are too busy with their pickup trucks, that's possibly something where you can now create your niche for renting vehicles on Turo to see if it makes sense, right? Right. For me, the reason why I got into Turo is because I used to work for a rental company. And I hated the way that they treated me as an employee. And I was like, you know what? If you guys don't respect me as an employee, 
I'm going to become your biggest competition. So that's my reason for getting into the into the Toro market. I was like, okay, this is a backdoor way I can get in to start building my fleet, to start with one car and then get to multiple cars. But I'll get more into it. Um, I want to let Ryan let us know why he started Toro. Well, I started um, maybe a two and a half now. Um, before that, I used um, friends that um, needs a needs a I have a couple of vehicles, so I was like, "Yeah, you can use my car, I charge them." Right? But like that's they, that's like play. I have them sign a contract. Any damage happen, um, they're responsible for it. They they pay the um, amount for any damage or collisions. Then I spoke. To and you're like, yo, why don't you do a car in Toro? And I was like, well, what's Toro? And he's like, it can be, but for your car. And like, you can register your car and rent it out. He's like, yeah. As soon as he's told me that, I got, um, and I was like, I was looking through it. I was like, oh. so I registered my car. Bam, the right. next day. Your, um, your internet's kind of choppy. Are you on Wi Fi? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. You're not in the basement. I don't know. I don't know. It's supposed to be Bell Fives, not sure what's going on. <laughs> you probably have to turn off your internet then. All right, let me get on my. Okay. Okay. So I started. Um... Rented my car out a few years back, just straight cash to like friends that needed a car because I had like an extra car, right? So I was like, you know, it's just sitting there. Might as well make some money. But I usually have my friends sign some contracts or be um so they'd be liable for any damage that happens to my car. Right. But then I was talking to Dean and Dean was telling me about Toro. I was like, yo, what is that? He's like, it's like Airbnb, but for your car. So as soon as he told me about it. I got on it. I was like, oh, this is cool. You could actually rent rent your car out. Not only you can rent your car out, you can also um there's other cars that are on there that you if you want to test drive something, it's it's out there. You just book it. Right. So I was like, oh, this is pretty neat. So um the next day, um I uploaded my car and boom, instantly someone booked booked my car. I was like, I was excited. I was like, cool. So a uh, person came, got the car, left. I was like, all right. And then um, returned it. And then uh, three days later, I believe, three or four days, I got um, I got, I got, I got, cat, uh, got some money sent to me in my PayPal account. I was like, yo, this is sick. So I was like, yo, I was like, I reached out to Dean. I was like, yo, Dean, this is sick, man. And I'm like, I appreciate the lookout. So, because I'm always, always looking to make money, right? That's, that's what I'm, passionate about how to generate a wealth or make my money work for me without me even doing anything mm -hmm. so every weekend my car being booking out booking out booking out booking out i was like oh this is sick and then i was like all right um i'm i'm, I'm really i'm really liking this so i was like all right my car is a, a 2010 genesis coupe it's a six speed so i was like um yo let me because it's going out for cheap so i'm like yo let me see if i could get more money for this so like i usually just stop the price on it for a bit and people have been paying booking it out left right and so i was like yo i'm making mad money on this all my maintenance fee any car park car parts that i like i need for my car it's not coming out of my pocket so i was like yo this is blessed so that's how i got on it and it's been working for me for ever since a lot of people have been asking me like yo what if they damage your car i'm like well isn't that why we pay insurance Right. Mm -hmm. So people are afraid. That's the, the biggest concern is like, yo, what if they write off your car or or anything like that? I'm like, bro, that's what we pay insurance for. Yep. Every month the insurance is 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 getting our money for no reason. And they're not they're not working. Right. So I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, let the insurance cover. It. And Toro has liabilities as well. So yeah. So I didn't have any any issues uh, lending on my car. Amazing. Yep. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's an amazing story. And when ever getting into something new, always start with your why before doing anything. It will provide you clarity and uh, help you achieve your end goal. 
when you just jump into something not knowing why you're getting into these things or you're just doing it for the sake of money you're gonna have a lot of pitfalls because you'll probably end up getting the wrong car or you're not charging enough for that vehicle right so you always want to start with your why as to why you're getting into this into whatever it is if it's toro investing real estate whatever it may be right and um so now you guys shared why you want to do it uh, uh your experience so far or your reason for doing it ryan can you tell us your experience so far with toro the ups the downs the good the bad the ugly um i uh good i've met a lot of great people's great networking tool um bad it just happened to happen like a couple like friday past i i put like a like a month ago i put on some brand spanking 20 inch rims on my car man and tires brand new tires brand new brand new um rims right make the car look um nice so friday i rented out and this lady came picked it up and um I was showing, I was walking around with the damage, explained to him, like, yo, I just got these rims. She's like, oh, why are you renting out? I'm like, that's to make money. I'm like, I'm like, I really don't really, I'm like, if it gets damaged, that's what insurance for, right? It gets fixed. And she said, like, okay. So she took it, brought it back. And on the passenger side, there's a scratch, three scratches on my rim. I was like, ah, <laughs> my brand new rims, right? But it's like, it's nothing to like worry about anything like that. I'm like, it's, it's an easy fix. I'm like, she took the, uh, I believe tour has its own insurance, mm -hmm. right? So she's covered, so she doesn't have to worry about it. She took their coverage. So I was like, all right, I messaged Toro. Um, they said they're going to get back to me in two to three business days. So probably around Tuesday. And I documented the damage. Um, and I sent it in to ask um, my body shop or where I wanted it fixed. I sent them all the information. So now I'm just waiting back. But in the meantime, it was just um, as soon as it came in, it went back out, right? So I'm not really fussing. And I called the body shop. They're like, yeah, it's like $300 to fix. I was like, all right, cool. And then another $300 for the brand new tires. I was like, all right, so it's going to cost them around like $600, right? So, and then I believe Toro is asking me how much, what's the value of it? I'm like, yo, honestly, at, at that time, I didn't know. So I, I put like roughly between five five hundred to a thousand dollars to fix the car so i'm just waiting back to tour to see exactly what the process is like but for the most part it's pretty explanatory like the app shows you every little step that you need to take just in case of anything which is pretty incredible and it's uh easy to, uh, to maneuver so i'm just waiting um probably around tuesday to see what's going to happen but for the most part my car is out on the road Funny that you bring that up because literally the day after, the same thing happened to my car. Yeah, right? <laughs> Guy scratched the rear, scratched the side of the car, and he's like, I don't know what happened. I was like, okay, you just hit something. That's all it is. Yeah. But luckily, that's, you that's just the, That's the, 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 the question. Like, I'm like, I'm like um, you knew, you, you knew I, I, lent, I rented my car to you. Everything was, everything was brand new. There's not a scratch, no dust on the car. So yeah. she's like, yeah, I don't know. She's like, I don't remember scratching it. But she's like, yeah, it's there. It's fresh. So I was like, all right, cool. There was no arguments or anything like that because everything yeah. was all documented, right? So I took all the before pictures. So I was like, there was no arguments or anything. She was pretty nice about it. And then she's willing to rent again, right? It's all about like service too. Because if someone comes to your car, you can't be like attacking. Like, yo, you dodged my car. Da, da, da. I'm like, First, I'm like, yo, you, you good? She's like, yeah, I'm all right. I'm like, well, there's a little damage here. And then. I mean, you remember like hitting a curb or anything like that? She's like, yo, I don't remember. She I was like, I'm like, okay, it's, it's it's easy fix. I'll just um she's like, but I took the Toro um insurance. So I was like, oh, okay, no problem. So I just I documented it and I sent it in. But the funny thing is, the day before, Dean, I messaged you and asked you about um what are the what are the procedures just in case something does happen? Because I've through the time I've rented my car for the last two years, I've never had an accident. <laughs> so I was thinking to myself, maybe I shouldn't have asked you that. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> well, it's good that you went through the experience because now you understand what you need to go through when someone or does damage to your car or even crashes your car. I've yeah. had horror stories personally where cars been written off, but 
it didn't really affect me because I had insurance covered, right? So I could sleep better at night knowing that there's insurance on my car and that it's either going to be fixed or they're going to pay me out for the car. And uh, so now that leads me back to Colin. The questions that you have for either myself or Ryan that uh, is that's been holding you back from getting into Toro that we can both answer for you. So first question is, what type of insurance do you guys get on the car? Do you go through the Toro app? Let's say if you say, I'm buying a new a Honda Civic, right? Mm -hmm. And I have this Honda Civic and I don't have insurance on the car. Should I go to Toro and say, hey, Toro, can you for, um, insure the entire car? Also, does it matter what region you live in too as well? So, what type of insurance do you have? Liability insurance? Is it through the Toro app or another provider? Also, yeah, there we go. That, that should be the first question. What type of insurance? Excellent question. So you got to make sure that your car actually has insurance on it because you can't be driving it without insurance, right? And Turo does also have their own insurance policy. So how that works with Turo is the moment your car gets rented and if they're either picking it up or you're delivering it, insurance takes over, takes uh, ownership of your vehicle. So now your vehicle is not covered by your insurance anymore. It's covered by insurance. Turo covers you up to $2 million in liability. So your car is pretty much safe the moment that it's booked and the person has your vehicle. Another question you're asking, what do you do? Well, how do you go about the, the insurance through the insurance companies? You let the insurance companies know that you will be renting your vehicle on Turo. Some insurance companies will charge an additional premium. I've heard as much as like $5 a month or a year, they'll increase the premium. or it's free, but you just need to let them know that you're going to be renting your vehicle on Turo. Turo doesn't offer insurance outside of their platform, only when your vehicle is being rented by um, a renter. So when with your insurance company, you should have full coverage, not no half liability. It's full coverage, right? Well, that's up to your discussion because now when you're driving your vehicle, and if you only have liability insurance and you get into an accident outside exactly. of Turo, you're not covered. You're only covered for the liability portion, right? So that's literally taking care of the other person's car. So I would always recommend having full coverage on your vehicle. Yeah, I have full coverage on my vehicle. I'm going to, uh, I believe, Allstate. And what was the other question? Sorry, can you repeat the question about um, the regions? The region. So let's say you live in lovable Branton, right? Mm -hmm. And their region is pretty much one of the highest regions in the world, right? How do you go about it? Because there are a lot of people who do other ideas of saying that they live in Guelph, they live in Cambridge and all that type of stuff, right? So, right, you don't want to, there's always, there's always a certain, I won't say loopholes, but other streams of going about it. So I want to make sure that like if somebody goes into like, oh, I'll just put it on my Cambridge, my friend's Cambridge uh, house and after put it over and rent it from Branton. Is that something that you have to be mindful of or open? It's an open conversation. I apologize for bringing that type of energy in a conversation, but it's something that it oh, yeah. Look, look, yeah. Um, my car, I live in, I live in Barry. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> right now is in Barry. Yes. Right. Fair I'm in Brampton. Fair enough. I, I, you know, I may go back and forth to both houses, but right now I'm I'm in Barry. Fair enough. Understood. Understood. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do Brampton. that right there. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say use your discretion on that one. It's just okay. um, for me, past experience just uh what i've gone through i'll just tell you my experience going through it with insurance companies a lot of people when the, when they do do things like that you can you do run the risk of either your insurance being canceled or them mm -hmm. not covering your car so that is at your own risk that is not something that i recommend if you are going to be using your address and you live in an area that is um pretty much taxed the highest i'll call it right. look, make sure the car that you're getting makes sense to put on the platform 
So if you're buying a Honda Civic and you're paying $600 in insurance and you're only making $600 on the app, it doesn't make sense to get a Honda Civic. You'll look at getting um, a different brand because also you gotta you, you have to make sure you take into consideration the type of car you're getting as well. Honda Civics are one of the highest uh, insurable cars in Ontario. Reason being is they're the most widely stolen vehicle, right? So a uh, uh, flip or an equivalent to a Honda Civic would be like a Toyota Corolla, a Hyundai Elantra. So you would want to look in that same uh, size range to see which car makes the most sense in your area. Perfect. So yeah. this leads me to the second question. Mm -hmm. What type of cars and what type of kilometers are, should you be looking for for this Turo app for someone who's just starting out? Okay, so what type so of cars? In like? my case, I'm thinking. Um, for me, I'm I'm thinking. In my head, I I'm thinking two types of cars: a pickup truck, right, and a small like Fiat Mini Cooper type of vehicle because it's it's a nifty small car. It's uh, it's more eye catching for an individual, but what years should you be looking at? What's the cost of it? Because it leads into another question about someone for me in my head is how about if I just went to the bank or use a, one of my line of credits to purchase a vehicle just for the app to see how to pay it off, then earn the, the, the funding from it. So it's a, another fully loaded question. Sorry. <laughs> So what type of car or year? So Turo, you can rent up to a car that is 12 years old or newer. So literally, so right now we're in 2021. Yeah. You can rent up to 2009. That's the oldest vehicle you can purchase. Mileage. 2010. Yeah. Yours is grandfathered. So you're fine. So any car that's been grandfathered will stay on the platform. But if you try to add a new car, anything like 2009 or older or 2008 and old, 2009 this year, 2008 was last year. So if you get in, if you get a 2009 this year, it can be grandfathered over to the, the following years. As in terms of mileage, 200 is the cap to get your car on, on, on to Turo, but if it goes over, then it'll be grandfathered. However, for me, I try to stay, it, it all depends on the brand as well. So if it's like a German car, I don't really go past 160 because that's when they start to give up. So I would want a car that has uh, lower kilometers, roughly around 100 or less for the, the newer cars. If you're going like Japanese cars, you know they're built to last. So if you're having the Honda Civic or the Corolla, you just want to make sure that you're under the 200, thre 200 uh, threshold. And um, in terms of the... Trucks, like, dom like uh, domestics. Yeah, so the trucks now, you would have to figure out. So what I usually do before purchasing a car, I go look on the app to see if there's any trucks on there and how often they're being rented. If I see somebody with like 50 plus, a few people with a 50 plus um, uh, stars, then it's like, okay, people are renting this. And then I go see how often, I go look at their comments to see how often um people are renting it or leaving comments on this to, for me to gauge if this makes sense getting, right? Um, also, Turo has a calculator that you can also use on their website that gives you an estimate of how much money you'll make and how many days your car will be rented uh, at, at a specific price that they, they choose or whatever. So that's a way that I would go about looking to see if a pickup truck makes sense and the area that I'm in as well. Because I noticed... Me having a convertible in Toronto versus somebody having a convertible in like Burlington, mine does 10 times better than the person in Burlington. So you also want to make know your area as well, what people rent on a frequent basis. Uh, oh, the Fiat. So Fiat, um, I did have one, but fortunately it became a write-off. But it was a very popular car. I had the Fiat convertible and people loved that car. It was just that cute little tiny car literally can park it go anywhere you want to and i was making a premium on that car i was charging like 50 plus a day for that car and it was summertime it just flew like it just went like i got a steal of a deal on that car so literally i just had it it, it worked wonders for me from the time i had it till the time that it got into the accident um 
And then you asked about the line of credit or borrowing from the bank line of credit. So that all comes down to your numbers. After you do your numbers to see what makes the most sense to rent on Turo, a line of credit is always the best option to use when borrowing money. Reason being, it's a double-edged sword for you because the interest that you're being charged is interest that you can claim on your tax return at the end of the year versus where it's a car payment, not so much that you can claim the interest. Well, it, it's more so the... Um, the the interest your or well, your car payment is it because it's a depreciating asset oh. for you at that point point right? right so you're only getting a percentage of of that interest and the car payment getting taken off of your your bottom line for your tax return so mm -hmm. i would any mm -hmm. anything if you're going to use the line of credit that's always the way i would go when it comes mm -hmm. to borrowing money because it's the double-edged sword so um did i answer all your questions you did, but you started the question, the third question, uh, well, fourth question, technically. Um, how do you start? Because you talked about that rating system, but you looked at 50 to something like 50 apps. I have no clue what that means because how would I, how would I generalize it and govern, okay, what type of car am I looking for to purchase, mm -hmm. right? So where would, how does that first start? How do you first start the, the app? Mm -hmm. Two, how do you look at the ratings to know what type of car you choose, should choose for that? Sorry, not rating. It's the, um, like, so other get, like other people that are renting their car, it's called the, well, let me find it for you. Oh, this guy doesn't have anything. The, the amount of trips. Sorry, that's what I meant by. So I, I, I kind of gauge that. So I'll see how long they've been on the platform. And I just take an educated guess because you don't know how long those trips are, but I kind of use it just as a, as a, to give myself an idea of how long people are renting the vehicle or how many trips that I can expect within us a, um, a year time frame. So if I see that the car has been on, been on the app for two years and they have a hundred trips, I'll say, okay, at minimum I'm getting 50 trips. How long those trips are, I don't, but. Um, I can expect about 50 trips minimum. So of that number, I'll say, okay, then I'll go see what the, the, the price is in like the average price for these cars. So if I see someone that has like a Mercedes C300 for a hundred bucks and then 10 other cars are a C300 for like 60 bucks, I'm not going to take the hundred bucks into consideration. I'm going to just fo focus on the $60 ones and figure out, okay, so they're renting at 60, a uh, hundred dollars is the highest that I could charge if they do have trips on their, their profile and then i'll kind of take an educated guess as to how much i'll be making based off of the amount that they're charging and the amount of trips that 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 i see that they they have and then also there's the the turtle calculator so i'll give you a thing what the calculator looks like uh, let me share my screen with you guys so this is a turtle calculator so as you can see, oh, this is an S600, oops, let's do 550. So as you can see here, if you were deciding, all right, I want a 2017 Mercedes-Benz S-Class. So their daily price right here is saying, this is from their calculator. So you can expect to, uh, to charge about $200 a day for this vehicle. And then throughout the month, you can expect about 12 to 13 bookings. So that's almost half of the month that this car will be up. And this is how much that you would earn in the month. And this is how much you'll be earning per day. So this is Turo. So Turo takes 30% of all, of all your bookings. So any bookings that you get that and also the mileage, they'll take 30%. And delivery, I believe they changed to 10%. But I got to double check that one. So here, you'll make 150 based off of them charging 201 on the app. And then now you would want to, so out of that, those 12 days, you want to say, okay, will this be able, the 1949, will this be able to cover my insurance, my car payments, and regular maintenance, like oil change or brakes, right? So that's how I look at this. So I'll take this information here. Then I'll go over to the app and see who has um, S-Class Benz on the platform. And then if I see that there's anyone with like 20, not, not so much 20, but like 30 plus, then it's like, okay, then this car maybe makes sense to purchase. I'll also in the area that I'm in as well. So if I'm deep out in like Hamilton 
and I know that Turo is not something that's big out there, I'm not going to buy this car because it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. However, it goes back to your why. Why are you purchasing this car? Are you looking for this just to solely make you money? Or are you buying this to reduce how much you pay for this car? So when I started this app, I it was my gateway to one, start a car rental company, two, for me to purchase a high-end car and drive it without the fear of not being able to pay for it. So it was just more so to reduce how much I was paying for that car. So I don't know if you remember the, the 2014 or the 2012 Mercedes-Benz that I had, the CLS. So I got that vehicle because that was one of my favorite cars to, that I, I've always wanted. The moment I put on that platform, I didn't expect it to get booked out as much as it did. So to a point where I barely got to drive my car. But I was happy because my car was paying me. So the one, two times I did get to enjoy, enjoy, drive the car, I enjoyed it. Because I, th I believe me and Ryan had this discussion years ago or whatever um, about purchasing a high-end car. So I was like, listen, or he said, I brought him the idea and he's like, okay, if I buy a high-end car, I'm going to probably only drive it on weekends. So why in the world do I want to buy a high-end car and be paying out the ass for this vehicle, right? So I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So that's why for me, it made perfect sense to do what I was doing because if I'm a weekend driver, then why not just rent out the car during the week, right? Let it pay for itself. And then I'm driving the car essentially for free. I'm literally just putting gas in the car and that's it going about my business, right? To a point where it's like, all right, I, I literally had to book off the days I wanted for my own car because it was being booked out that much. I've had somebody in 20, I think 17, 2017 or 18, my car was the number two car on Turo, just behind a Porsche. So I was doing really well with that vehicle to where I said, okay, I need to expand this and get more cars now. So with seeing those cal that calculator, right? Is that a calculator you, you see when you just go to the app now? Or is that something where you have to sign up through the account, um, the like create account? No, first? it's free. So it's anybody free. has access to it. So literally you just type Turo.com or Turo calculator and right. it'll literally pop up and then it lists all the cars. So no matter where you live, so it's Turo is based out of the, 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 the U.S. So it was funny that you mentioned your friend from California because they started out in San Francisco. That's literally where they started. And then they kind of, um, yeah, they're like um, nationwide in, in the States. And then they came here in 2016. And literally when it came here, I was one of the first um, adopters to the app. I was probably the eighth person on the platform to where now it's become a worldwide thing. And they're also becoming a publicly traded company soon. So you can see how big this company is getting in the direction that they're going in as well, right? Right. So security. Let's uh, here. Here's a security feature that I'm trying to understand. You're renting out as you're talking about with the CLS, right? And you're letting this car go off. What about speeding tickets? What about people smoking in the car you know more than tim hortons Sorry, um you said and people are doing it free willy yeah speeding on uh, like speeding the security risk of the car people speeding in the car on um, speeding tickets people let's say where they're picking the car up from because i picked up the car where i rented from from the gentleman's house so yeah. when i just keep renting out this car in front of my house. And after you have continuous activities in front there and people just looking at you and like, Hey, like I, I keep renting. I, I know how he, he is moving back and forth, just a security aspect and speeding tickets, car accidents. And like, how do you guys go through that? And the last, but least question on um, last, but important question that is out there. What do you guys do about the COVID protocol in regards to set, uh, cleaning the car and stuff? But security is the first question. Okay, so security. So, yeah, go on, Ryan. I was I've never experienced any tickets like anyone I've ever got it. So I couldn't talk on that. Everyone I do um, never had an issue. Um, as for the COVID, um, when they returned my car, 
I clean, I'm, I like to clean my own car. So uh, my car is always clean. So I always um, detail my car myself. And there's a sanitizer, there's mask um, if they need. Um, but for the most part, they come um, with their mask on or if I have to drop the car off, um, we, we stay our, our distance and, and we check in and check out the car. But for the most part, um, it's pretty, pretty easy. But you have the six feet, right? Um, yeah. Genesis, right? So people burning out your clutch, like how, like people could be tr just driving hard. Like some guy could be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try do 200 and luckily get, get away with it. Can you be notified from the car sensor letting you like, hey. Back you up and protect you from that type of situation? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to know. That's why um, the next thing I was, I was going to actually talk to Dean about, I was talking to Dean about, I wanted to install um, a dash cam, right? So I know exactly where my car is and what's being done to it. And um, I'll be notified. Yep. Um, there's, a, there's a couple dash cams out there that, uh, that you could sync to your, um, your phone. And it can let you know what's being done to your car. And you can, you can see what's, what's going on. Perfect. Um, yeah, the question that you had and also Ryan, I'm going to answer everything for you guys because these are amazing questions. And again, that's the reason why I started the Dope Podcast because people out there all have these same type of questions you guys have. So uh, hit the security question. So what I started doing at first, people were coming to my house. And then when I noticed I had... So then when I was, when I decided to increase my feet, I was like, you know what? The one, two people I did meet, they're kind of sketched. So I was like, you know, what? I don't want people coming to my house anymore. So I picked a central location for us to meet so that they don't know where I live. Even though your kind of your, um, your ownership does say where you live, but people don't really look in there to say, okay, this is where the person lives. But I just did a central location where it's like, okay, it's kind of in the open, Here's a car, do what you need to do. That's it. Unless the person says, hey, do you have somewhere to park or whatever? And it, there, it's like a one day thing. I was like, you can park on my street. I don't necessarily say on my driveway. I bet there's parking here or whatever. It, but it's at your own risk at that, that same time, right? Um, so speeding tickets and damage or smoking in your vehicle. So Turo is a platform that says no smoking allowed unless you want to say, hey, go smoke in my car. But then that would reduce your rating on the app for guests that don't smoke. Right. So I always just put it out there. There's no smoking in my car. I also there's a, a little guideline area that you can put the, your rules of the vehicle. So like for Ryan, six speed, yo, no, uh, no doing over to yeah, X, Y, Z with with my car or you'll be. Uh, penalize and pay a penalty of xyz so if people smoke in my car i'll say listen no smoking in my car there would be um, additional charge so at turo they have i think three tiers of charging people so it's like uh just a minimal fee like 50 bucks um 100 and something or if you need if you need extensive cleaning you let them know what they did you make sure you take pictures of evidence and then send it to Turo and be like, yeah, my car smells like smoke. I'm going to have to get it detailed. I got to clean out the things if it's like bad stains in there or whatever. And then you can charge the guest accordingly. So what I usually do is uh, take the pictures inside of the vehicle so that you can see that it's spotless. There's nothing in there. Also, if I do catch someone smoking, there, there's usually three ways to catch people with smoking. Ashes. Um, ashes this the smell it's 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 um they they can rebuttal against it but more often than not you would win the smell ashes and lighters like for some reason they always just leave lighters in your car so it's like take a picture of the lighter and be like yeah they're smoking in my car you take a picture send it to turo just as okay and then they'll give you your money so that's how i always combat when it comes to the smoking as for the speeding tickets if the person's speeding and they got caught by a police officer that's on them if the person speeding and got caught by a speeding camera, you charge it to the app. So literally, Turo is a platform where you don't have hassles of chasing people down for money that they owe you. You got a speeding ticket. I will give you have the opportunity to pay that ticket before it comes in. If you don't pay that ticket before it comes in, Turo charges an additional fee 
to process that ticket. You get reimbursed for the full amount of the ticket. I get tickets all day long. Tickets, 407, I just go through, okay, this person, this person, this person. You have the one, two person that will dispute it, but more often than not, they they end up losing because you have proof of everything, right? Like, yeah, the ticket, this is during their trip or whatever. Sometimes just make sure you double check uh, the times on the tickets. I've been um guilty of charging the wrong guests for like um 407 or speeding tickets because they literally fell into the same day but uh sometimes it does happen so that's another way to uh, so when it comes to tickets you don't have to worry about it T- parking tickets it's speeding tickets red light yeah, cameras same good. thing yeah gas as well so gas they and also Tiro gives you an additional ten dollars for inconvenience if they don't bring back yeah. your car at the the same level. So it's well, almost like a little additional income that you can make as that's, well. That's why I wanted to ask you, um, Dean, right? Because my car is now um according to the body shop where I'm gonna get the, my tires repaired, right? It mm-hmm. says that they're gonna need up to five to seven business names, right? Mm-hmm. So does Tora cover that or does the, the renter cover that? Now, no. I thought my car is gonna be out for five five days do they charge you know what i mean no that's the downfall of when your vehicle gets damaged or in an accident it's not covered by either so it's it's lost revenue at that that point um so the question about manual car high-end cars people speeding in the cars what you can do so this is for you ryan and to answer your question colin those type of vehicles you can put a limiter in the vehicle Or you can put like a tracker on the car. So if someone wants to, if you don't want your car outside of Ontario, you can put a tracker on your car that lets you aware that your car is outside of the radius that you have set up for your car. Same thing with a limiter. Limiter is something that usually you'd find in like trucks or whatever, or other high-end rental cars where it's like, all right, my car should not pass the speed of 120 or 130. So you put a limiter in the car that the person can't pass that speed. Also, you can be alerted by those apps so that you, you can automatically know that that person's speeding. And then once you're alerted, you can set your guidelines and be like, hey, if you're caught speeding, vehicle will be immediately uh, towed from you at your expense and reservation will be canceled in full. So literally you can set those parameters to protect yourself in the, with, with your vehicle. I've seen people do it with, uh, there was one guy that had like a Porsche on there. It's like, yeah, if you're caught speeding, I'm going to take back the car. You're going to be charged an additional 175 bucks plus tow fee for um, improper use of my vehicle. Yeah. I think that um, Best Buy has some great dash cams that let you know how fast your car is going. I think it's like, think where's the product's going. They have a few products like that, but they're like expensive. They're like seven, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. Yeah, but it's a great tool to have. Yep. Well, it's an investment in your car, right? To make sure yeah. that nobody's doing anything. It also, that it also alerts you um, if anything happens around your vehicle. Like, like say someone's yeah. trying to take off your tires or anything like that. Whether it's parked, it, it'll yeah. just continue recording, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. And the COVID protocol. So last year. Um, Turo introduced uh, a little training session that you got to take in terms of uh, making sure that your car is properly clean. Turo has a checklist of the most frequently touched spots in a vehicle that you should be wiping down. And they also tell you the types of supplies, the difference between COVID uh, cleaning products and or sanitizing products and cleaning products for your vehicle. So they give you a list of stuff that you can purchase to make sure that your car is um clean and clear of covid so what i do when i get the vehicles from people i come with uh, hand sanitizer wipes and i wipe down everything uh all the most frequent spots that people touch also i wipe the vents on the vehicle as well because people could be breathing into the vents and it could literally you just turn it on and then it's just coming back out you so i always make sure i wipe down the vents in the front dash um the the the, the rear the rear view mirror if you have sunroof, I clean that as well. The, the seat belts, the seat belt goes across the person, the door handles, the steering wheel, uh, everything in the middle console, every, like from A to Z, I clean all that once I get back the vehicle. You're on mute. Perfect. I got about two more, three more questions, but I, here's one of the important ones. How is this revenue that is taxable on your income yeah. or so. Okay. So 
you could be having a great time income coming in, but you have to clear this as taxable. If let's say, can you put it under a business title saying that you under your business, uh, ABC construction, and this is our, our truck, but we're renting it out type of thing too, as well. Can you do that? Yes. So you have two options to do so because, um, the only, the only downfall to Turo is they don't charge taxes, but I feel they will, it, it will come into play sooner than later because they have done it in the other marketplace for apps like, uh, uh, what's it going called? Um, Uber and Lyft. So I can essentially see that taxes will be coming in soon. However, right now taxes are not being charged to guests and we're not charging. Some people do try to charge taxes. I don't know exactly how they do it through the platform, but I don't think that they're getting as much bookings due to the fact that they're charging uh, HST on top of that. So I started off personal. So I just registered. You can either register through just setting up um, a master business license, or you can go to a corporation route. So it's up to you, sole proprietorship or corporation route. So sole proprietorship is the best way to start right now because um, if you go corporation route, you're going to be taxed a bit more. So with that, you have the vehicle. You just want to make sure you keep a, a keep record of all your expenses because when you file it as a sole proprietorship and you're going to be using the car personally, you got to make sure you split the difference between personal use and business use. And then you can write off your insurance, your gas, uh, car payments, and maintenance on the vehicle. Anything that's related to the, the Turo platform, or it's, it's a write-off to you. So uh, lo and behold, I switched over to a corporation in 2019, and it's under a company. So I just made sure the, the company, the insurance company was aware I'm renting these vehicles out on Turo. They were okay with it. So my cars are insured through my commercial insurance, and then I rent the cars on the platform. Okay. Um, here's the fun question. What type of cars do you recommend? Both of you guys, what type of cars do you guys recommend to be your first car on the Toro app? My car. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you the first day I, I downloaded that app, the next day I got a rental. Uh someone booked it, and then every weekend it's just it's just going out. Going out, going out, going out. It was like I couldn't keep up to it. Like at the point where like I wasn't driving my car no more. I was just collecting for my car. Right. I drive a 2010 Honda Honda a coupe. Mm -hmm. And young people love it. Uh, older people love it. I keep it clean. Um, it looks nice. Um, it's just a fun car to 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 drive. For me, it's, um, I always check the area that I'm in first before making that decision. Uh, but for me, uh, the car that has been very reliable and no issues was, is a Hyundai Elantra. So that was one of the first cars that I got to just consistently make money on the platform. And um, I, I, I took part in a lot of Turo's uh, meet and greets. And at the time, Elantra was one of the top five cars on the platform. So I try to, I go for what's going to be rented the most. So out of the top five cars at the, mo at the time for, for Turo, it was uh, Hyundai Elantra, Dodge Caravan, Mercedes C300. Uh, I don't remember if Civic was in there at the time. I know Civic is one of the top cars now. And now what's becoming very popular is the Teslas. So Model 3s are becoming very popular on the, the platform as well. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I appreciate you guys doing this. Appreciate, I appreciate Dean, uh, most importantly, uh, for giving me this, this insight because I'm 100% I'm, I'm all in on it. Yeah. Um, the thing where I... I now with the business aspect of it where you can use it for your for a business expense it is kind of interesting i think it should be more highlighted so if somebody wants to let's say put one two three uh construction 
and don't do anything. They they insurance company and say, hey, I want a rental for, I want to purchase a car under a rental, going through it, then putting over into an app that could work or using your personal vehicle is, is there everything. It, it seems very easy, but there has to be a big risk that both Ryan, yourself and Dean have in the back of your head that we haven't discussed. Like there has to be a big risk that what's the risk? Is there the cash flow will come in? It, there has to be something that we haven't talked about. Maybe you guys could touch on. Uh, the only risk I've went through is the unknown. So for me, it's COVID. I never thought COVID would be a thing, right? And the right. fact that my car is literally had to sit there and do nothing for months. So that was the big risk factor for me from a standpoint of this is my business. Uh, for Ryan, I, I, I can't speak for Ryan, but from what I would imagine for someone at the level Ryan's at, Ryan, you can speak to this as well, is um, it, it's a personal car. So it's not really a, a, um, a real loss to you because you had that vehicle anyways, right? So that, that uh, the amount that you're actually paying for that vehicle was already worked into your budget up already right but for me i wasn't expecting where i would have months of zero income coming in so it's like okay how am i going to pay for these cars now right so for me i kind of had a not well not to say i didn't have money left over to pay for these cars but i just had to move strategically where i said okay i can't afford to have 20 cars not renting for months upon months upon end so i said okay i got i i pivoted so i said all right let me sell my cars instead of holding on my cars so, right because they're depreciating assets anyway. So might as well get rid of them, wait till this blows over and then stock up again, right? And that's literally what regular insurance companies or not insurance, car rental companies were doing as well, where now the supply is so low, the demand is super high. So everybody's scrambling for cars now and there's no, there's no real place to get it. But I rather this way right now with the unknown, if COVID's here to stay or if it's gonna be gone tomorrow, right? So that's kind of the big thing for me, but I'll let Ryan speak to uh, for himself as to what his uh, risks are with uh, the general. I haven't really experienced any, any like nothing has come to mind where like it was, other than like uh, a client damaged my car or, or writes it off. Like then I'm like, yo, then I won't have a car, a personal car to drive. Like, you know what, that's when like, that's when I pay insurance. Right. If someone writes off my car, then I'll go just go through insurance and get another car. I don't really hold on to materialistic things, you know what I'm saying? I had this car for a while. Um and I have another car to drive. So if something happens to this car, all right, so be it. I'll just get another one. Oh, that that that's a great thing that you said, Ryan. This is not a platform for people that love their vehicle. Yeah, if, if you, you love, love your, your car, car do not don't rent do your car out. Cause it's don't not do it. for you. You don't like. Oh, all people are gonna get my car dirty. Yeah. Or if you're gonna come back like this, don't wear your car. This is not for you. Go on to the next thing. Look yeah. for something else. Like Rent this your car this week, this li- this week alone, my car made me four hundred dollars. I could have just been here or just been at home and not make that four hundred dollars. I just made four hundred dollars for that week just off my car. Yeah. So I was like, for me, it's working for me, and so far I haven't had anything major happen to it or in tickets or a big accident or anything like that god forbid right knock on wood but for me it's working and it's it's it goes out every weekend yeah also um a good key indicator is if you do decide to purchase a, a new vehicle for something like this or to supplement how much you're making i would recommend purchasing gap insurance the moment you get the car reason being is if your car does get into an accident and it becomes a write-off you want to make sure that you get full value of what you paid for the vehicle versus what the market says your vehicle is worth at the time because if you buy like a thirty thousand dollar car and somebody writes it off tomorrow and they say nope we're giving you twenty five thousand dollars you're responsible for that uh that five thousand dollars that you got to pay back to the lender so gap insurance is very important to have if you're going to be purchasing a new vehicle because then it covers that difference between what you paid versus what the market says the car is worth. Um, you, is it called gap insurance definition? Like the- yeah, so it's G-A-A-P. 
uh, no, or GAP, um, but it's gap insurance. So if you go to any dealership, you'll know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think a lot of people actually know, know that. about that insurance. Yeah. Well, two things. If they didn't tell you about it at the, the, the dealership, they don't believe in it. And the second thing, it's it's to protect you more than anything, right? So right. if the the person that told you the car, they didn't they did they don't see it in your best interest to, to purchase that, right? Like they 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 should have told you they need to tell you about gap insurance, warranty, anything associated with that vehicle. Because a lot of people, I I a few people think that these things are foolish, but insurance is to give you a peace of mind so you can sleep better at, at night that's why insurance was just created in general right people are looking at it like nah it's a cash grab blah 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 like no it's not cash grab it's to make sure you're protected i spoke to an individual the other day um i believe his car was stolen it was a brand new car um it got stolen and then insurance said okay we're only paying you this much you got to pay the difference and he didn't have gap insurance so now he's out of pocket and you got to figure out how to, where are you going to get X, Y, Z to pay off this lender now, right? Instead of just having gap insurance. My wife, her car was stolen. She had gap insurance. She was able to get the, the market value or sorry, the price she paid for the vehicle versus what it was worth. And what it was worth versus what she paid was a $10,000 difference. And it's like, we never thought her car would be stolen, but you never can be that. You can never be sure, right? At the end of the day, you're taking a gamble by not putting that those type of insurance, uh, those insurance um, things that they sell to you at the dealership. So in saying that, and I, and I want to connect this way to Ryan's car, how do you... What is the advertisement you should look to with your car? Because I guarantee you when someone looks at Ryan's car, they're like, oh, shoot, the rims are on. I want to drive that for the weekend. How do you set yourself apart from everybody else that your car is consistently getting rented out? Sorry, was that a question for me or, or Dean? No, that was for you. Oh, oh both? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, Ryan, you go first. Well, I, my car is, um, it just, it looks nice. You look at it and it, everyone's trying to figure like what it is. I'm like, it's just a Hyundai, like, <laughs> but it's just the model, the way it looks. And then the, the rims and tires I put on it, it looks, it looks, it looks real sexy. So people are drawn to it. Right. So they would want to test it out. So I know it's been working for me. It's just for looks for people. And I post the pictures up and they click through it and then they'll just book it just off the looks and then when they when they get it they drive it they're like well um the last the last client said that he wants to buy, actually buy a car like this and he was asking me about, more about the car bro it's, it's a 2010 hyundai hyundai coupe it's, it's, it's nothing special it's just i keep my car in such good condition and i the rims and the tires just it, it makes a difference yep uh for me so the pictures say a thousand words so it's always the pictures that they see first that draws them into your your profile and then for me it's it's customer service i make sure that i reach out to them i i greet them and pretty much the trips i have it's just the the customer service that i bring that 100 yeah, percent. i agree with pina with that 100 percent. that sure. sets you apart from some people or the other people on there because it's like if you just read some of these people's reviews you'll be like what the hell? And then it's funny when you get the same rental that they had, and it's like, I didn't have that experience with them, so I don't understand. Or why? Why did? Why was their experience not good? That other person. Even sometimes I go above and beyond. Like if I if it's my fault for something, like I'm late, or um, I I gave them the car empty, but I didn't have time to run to a gas station or something of that nature, right? I just make sure I message them. I apologize, blah, blah, blah. Even afterwards, I'll offer them a discount on their next rental, 5%, 10%. You can go up to, I think, 15%. And I just send them a message and then go from there, right? You won't be able to satisfy everybody, but I just make sure that I keep it, my customer service, 120% with everybody. Did you Have you ever gone to like, meet up with a client uh, later on, like a customer and say, hey, 
like they were having, let's say, I don't know how to open a car. I left, lock the keys. Have you ever gone to those experiences where you had to go to site, a site where like, okay, I have the extra key. I open the car for you. Those type of situations. Uh, not for keys. Other things, yes. Cars has broken down, but Turo covers it. So they just called the the one eight hundred number. They'll get a tow truck out, bring the car where it needs to be, uh, tire flat or whatever. Or I've had people ask me, how do I put the car in reverse or whatever? So you kind of got to guide them through that. Or even the Bluetooth. Oh, it's not working. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, did you try this? Did you try that? And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, sometimes. So you want to make sure you're familiar with your car as well. You, you kind of almost want to be able to close your eyes and know how to do everything because that's the experience you're going to have with somebody where it's like, oh, I pressed this button. It's like, did you press this one on the left or did you press this one on the right? So you literally have to be able to walk them step by step with your eyes closed. I had I had a uh, one incident where I had to drop off the car uh, to a client, and he literally asked me if I could sit with him while he figures the everything out. And as soon as he took off, it stalled. And I looked at him like, "You know how to drive stick, right?" He's like, "Yeah, I just need a few, a few go arounds." I'm like, "All right." So I sat with him, <laughs> and then we went around the block a couple of times for him to get used to it so i spent a little 10 minutes out of my time to get him familiarized with the car and then he was good after that he returned the car and he said he loved the car he wants to rent it again he has so much fun uh, stuff like that sometimes you gotta take a little time but uh, toro has an app where the, the the clients you and the clients could communicate that's the best way you guys could communicate any, any questions or any troubles that they have or concern, they could just message you like like any app. Yep, most definitely. Or I tell them call me on WhatsApp. You guys have continuous. You guys have like continuous. Pardon? Oh, okay, sorry about that. Do you guys have like continuous renters? Do you have continuous renters that keep coming back to you guys like all the time? Yes. Me no. Every every client I have are new. Yeah. For and, me, uh, the, yeah, go on. Sorry, right? There's one, there's, there's a few that wanted a book, but I already told him it's already booked out. So he's like, Every time I'm trying to book your car, it's been rented. I was like, <laughs> uh, I don't know what to tell you, bro. I'm gonna probably have to get another car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, um, I've, I've had a lot of continuous renters, and I think it's more so not so much the car, but the experience that I provide to them as why they continuously come back to me. Because some people, their profile, they have like 50, 60 rentals. And then they stumble upon me and then it's like they literally stop going to those guys and now they come to me. And it's based on the customer service that I provide to them. Yep. So I want to conclude this, this, um, this podcast today. It was amazing. And I just want to thank both of you guys for coming on to this platform, the dope podcast where we display other people's experience, expertise, and enhance your knowledge. Uh, for more information, uh, you can hit me up on Instagram, Dean M. Chambers, or Checks Over Strikes. Also, this will be load, uploaded on YouTube. It will also be on iTunes, Apple iTunes, all the podcast platforms. And I will be starting a Patreon account. And membership fees will be as low as $3. What I will be providing is uh, do's and don'ts for Turo. Also, all the other things that I have in the pipeline with real estate investing, stock market, forex trading, all that good stuff. You'll be able to find it on the Patreon platform. So under the Patreon platform, it will be called The Dope Podcast. Thank you, guys. Have yourself a great day and look out for the next episode.